Wolverine's claws originally were actually implants surgically placed and screwed inside his body. And the effort the scientists went through to not only make this happen, but to allow the claws to function is nothing short of immense. Hello everyone, welcome to Trick Theory. It's videos like this that really bring me back to the days of trying to memorize every insertion and origin for every muscle in the human body in a blind panic for the upcoming human cadaver final. And while I can't say I remember them, you know the way Wolverine's claws have been shown to work to most audiences, shredding their way through ligaments, displacing bone, only to come out between his knuckles? Well, this is not how Wolverine's claws work in the vast majority of his media. In the X-Men animated show, comics, and even newer films, Logan's claws are shown to always come out of the top of his hand, extending out of the steel tubes located in the top of his gloves. What may not be so well known, though, is way back when the character was created in 19. 1974, Wolverine's claws were actually part of the gloves themselves, a tool that he would carry around with him much like Spider-Man and his web shooters. It was only later in 1976 that his claws were decided and shown to be part of his body, as teammates finally saw his claws coming out of the top of his hands with the gloves off. This was soon followed by Wolverine getting an insane healing factor and unbreakable skeleton added into the mix in the following years. But the claws, however, were decided to still not be part of his powers, rather being cybernetic implants created by scientists within the Weapon X project. And this is what Wolverine's claws have generally been accepted and shown as being across most of all media today, except X-Men Origins Wolverine and the following films where he was given brand new bone claws that were grafted with adamantium, and Deadpool looked like this. And now with Marvel not only being heavily onto the multiverse trend, but it looks like they have been ramping up to use their X-Men once again, with Wolverine's original claws looking to have made a full return in both the animated and live action films. By the time Wolverine was either captured, betrayed, or in the end forced to undergo intense psychological conditioning and physical torture to break his spirit and erase his memories, the team working on the project knew that bonding an unbreakable metal to a skeleton wasn't going to be enough. If they were going to make an army of unstoppable soldiers, they would need weapons they could use anywhere and anytime they wanted. And what would be better than a completely hidden weapon that would allow a mind-controlled operative like Logan to walk around as if he was just like everyone else. And thus, to create the claws, the scientists working on the project had a few big hurdles to go over. The first being figuring out how long they could actually make the claws, then where they would not only store them but how they would come out of his body, and then finally how Logan would actually control these six insanely sharp blades resting against his flesh every second of every day. So he would never accidentally extend or retract them when itching his nose, reaching for the cereal, or just giving a non-target an unpleasant firm handshake. To first figure out the length of his soon-to-be claws, we can see in flashbacks in the first X-Men films, where Logan's claws are also implied to be implants, the scientists not only marked up his body pretty extensively with measurements and spots where Logan was to be dissected, but using many x-ray and MRI scans, they figured out the size of his hands and forearms. Namely, they had to measure the size of Logan's anti-brachial interosseous space, or basically the space between the bones of his forearms where the claws would be housed. And ultimately, this space would decide the size of his claws, or so you would think. You see, the actual open or non-bony space in the typical adult male forearm ranges from about 20 to 25 centimeters in length, and at maximum, its width is about 2 to 3 centimeters, and Wolverine's claws will never having a stated length have been shown to usually be anywhere from 22 to 30 centimeters long. So hey, this actually tracks in terms of the claw's length, but it's in their width that we sometimes run into trouble. You see, at maximum, for Logan's claws to fit within his forearm, possibly destroying much of the tissue, cutting through blood vessels and nerves located in the space, Logan only has enough space for one of his massive movie claws to fit, before they would be carving their way through not just just his wrist, but these claws would be resting where the adamantium coated bones of his forearm should be. So in iterations where his claws aren't overly bulky, being something like a centimeter in with each, they would fit in just fine. But in other iterations, his forearms would have to be around three times as wide as the average person. And this is where the literal mad scientists may have gotten a little creative, trying different ways over and over again to widen this space to create a 
larger gap between the radius and ulna of his arms, even going so far as to restructure the bones of his forearms, doing it while Logan was partially sedated and forcibly injecting him with adamantium at the same time, before his healing factor could repair the damage. And upon placing the claws inside of his body, each adamantium claw was placed inside of its own adamantium tube, causing his well-known sound for extending them as the claws slide against the tubes. As for how the claws come out of Logan's body, appearing out of the space between the long bones of his hand, unfortunately for Logan, while the scientist took great care in assuring he could do maximum damage to whoever came across his path, they once again skipped out on minimizing his own pain. Because while the bones of his forearms may have been altered, one thing that would be very hard to impossible for them to get around would be altering the bones inside his wrist, and otherwise use his hand to do much of anything. Therefore, every time Logan goes to extend his claws, he is still forcibly reshaping his entire wrist, a process that it seems he needs to constantly do to strangely keep his body and mind used to the whole process. As in the 1993 comic titled Fatal Attractions, were similar to the one gruesome scene in X-Men 97 season 1 finale, it's here that Magneto rips Wolverine's adamantium skeleton off of him, nearly killing him, with writers taking the chance to change Wolverine's claws to once being bone, but in the same comic, Wolverine also tells Jubilee that he needs to constantly pop his claws to keep the channels open, much like the process someone needs to do once they've had their ears pierced. And while this tells us that Logan's body, or more so his healing factor, has adapted at least somewhat to his artificial claws, if they are artificial implants, then how does Logan actually control them? Much like with his bone claws, scientists working on the Weapon X project were said to have surgically rearranged his muscles, meaning that they surgically attached a muscle to each of the claws, allowing Logan to bring the claws in and out at will, just like any animal with retractable claws. Except this wasn't actually enough, not near enough to get his claws working. In fact, the workers also had to install a surgical implant in Logan that could respond to the electrical signals coming from his nervous system that otherwise tell the claws to extend or retract, and they may even control more than that. And beyond that, did you notice in the first live-action X-Men movie, when Magneto lifts up Logan on the train and begins to pull his claws out, we can see that the claws are entirely man-made, complete with machining marks and screws at their base. And in instances where we get to see x-rays of Logan's skeleton, we can see not only the tube each claw is housed inside of, along with the metal screws at their base, but we also see the metal claw stoppers that could be controlled by the same device that reads Logan's nervous system, as it's these metal stoppers that serve to stop the claws from protruding unintentionally or extending beyond a certain point. But the thing I found to be rather interesting is the fact that Wolverine's body accepted the claws at all, that the scientists were able to somehow ensure that his body, his healing factor, wouldn't reject the metal claws that would then force them out of his body, similar to how people given surgical implants can reject these foreign objects. And just like how most of us who were born in the 90s cheered at the return of the classic X-Men theme song, I mean that thing was just pure hype, there are ways that the scientists could ensure a successful implant. Cause while regular people can reject or otherwise develop an immune response to a new implant, if Wolverine was to do this, it's likely that his healing factor would full on expel the blades from his body, like it does with any unwanted bullets or shrapnel. Sure, his skeleton may be stuck with a newly grafted adamantium, but his claws are more or less floating in the middle of his forearm, and could be done away with, allowing his muscles in his arms to finally heal themselves back to normal. Well, the thing is, for someone's body to reject a new implant, it's basically due to the immune system having a reaction to particles like adhesive, plastics, chemicals, or excessive scar tissue made around the implant. For successful implants, the body may create a fibrous capsule around the implant to otherwise ensure that there is a protective barrier between it and the rest of the body. And beyond this, a really crucial process called osseointegration occurs, where structures like bone actually attach to the implant, accepting it. And for Wolverine, since adamantium doesn't have any chemicals, particles, and being indestructible, the metal doesn't ever chip off to create anything that would otherwise cause his immune system to go on alert. So scientists could basically sit back, cross their fingers, and pray that his tissues allow themselves to be connected to the new metal devices, like 
like any other surgery. But unfortunately, while the surgery worked, the mind control did not. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Bone claws or not, due to his claws, when Wolverine first appeared, his original name was actually going to be called the Badger, both sounding less cool and further symbolizing his connection to the House of Hufflepuff. With us going over how Wolverine's newer claws work in these videos, remember it's all just a trick. See you in the next one.